Hi, I'm Susan Wojcicki, and this is an interview with my mom, Esther Wojcicki. Welcome, Mom. Thank you so much. I am particularly excited to be <laughs> interviewed here with my firstborn child. I can't tell you how exciting this is for me. Well, um, I want to talk a little bit about your background and where you came from and what's your career and um, a bunch of other questions. Okay. Um, so I thought it might be useful for people to know first a little bit about what it was like for you when you were growing up. Okay, well thank you for briefly. asking. Briefly. Yes, briefly. I'll try to be as brief as possible. Um, so I was born in New York City and I spent the first six years of my life there and then I moved to Los Angeles. And I came from a family that was uh, an immigrant family. My mother was born in Russia, in Siberia, and my father was born in the Ukraine, and they met in New York City. And um, my father was an artist, and my mother actually didn't have an occupation. And so when I was growing up, we were actually pretty poor. How did you get on the path to be able to um, have a education, more education than your parents had, and have a really successful career? Well, what so, do you think happened that enabled you to so achieve happened, so much with your life? Yeah, what happened was that um, I didn't want to live in the same impoverished environment that my parents were living in. And I saw the only way out was education. And so actually at the age of 10, I decided that that was it, and I was going to get out. And I was going to study as much as I possibly could and learn as much as I possibly could. It's great, Mom, you, you have a really, it's great that you were able to see the path and decide you wanted to go to college, which I know was really difficult. Yeah, it was uh, very tough. But then you decided you were gonna become a teacher, and you've been a teacher now for almost 50 years, if not more than 50 years, which I don't think a lot of people can say. Um, so how, tell me, like, why did you decide to become a teacher? Well, um, actually, I was not just a teacher, I was also a journalist. So I actually, you know, I continued my career as a journalism, as a journalist, but then I decided I wanted to be a teacher because I really like people and I wanted to help them be the best they could be. I also worked on a playground for kids. I was the after school sort of playground director. And I seem to have this really sort of miraculous ability to work well with kids. And they did everything that I said, and it was kind of remarkable. So then I thought, well, when I was in college- Did I, you do everything you wanted as kids? Uh, no, you didn't, <laughs> but I tried. <laughs> but um, so I'd have a, a philosophy that actually worked pretty well with you too, uh -huh. um, and your two sisters. <laughs> And the, the philosophy was, um, it's encapsulated in this little acronym I created for the book I wrote, Moonshots in Education. It's TRIC is the acronym. So it's trust, respect, independence, collaboration, and kindness. So, Mom, you always have um, kind of a silly side to you, where you're always laughing and doing something unexpected. Where, where did that come from? Um, How did you turn out so crazy, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not totally crazy. I'm just partially crazy. It's just that I, I think it's really important to enjoy life. You know, if you have two ways of looking at some really bad, ch difficult challenges. One is to cry and get really upset, and the other is to just have some humor about it and then move forwards. Well, so one of the things I wanted to ask you is a little bit about your parenting style, which is a little strange for me to ask you about as your daughter, because I know about your parenting style, but I think it'd be really useful for other people to know about your parenting style. And um, in particular, you have three daughters, and um, both Anne and I are CEOs of companies in the tech area, and there aren't a lot of women CEOs of tech companies. And then our third sister is an epidemiologist at UCSF. So I want to know, like, what did you, what did you feed us for breakfast, Mom? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Oh, what did I do? I gave you a ton of freedom, and um, and I well, I let you brick, pick your own breakfast cereal. But actually, as if long I, as it didn't have sugar in as it, as long as it didn't have any sugar in it, that's right. You had to have a cereal that didn't have any sugar. But I I gave you a lot of opportunity to pick all kinds of things in your life. Like for example, I forgot how old you were, maybe five or six. You picked that hot pink rug 
for your bedroom. <laughs> and we had to yes, live I with did. that for 10 years. It was like fluorescent pink. It was the color of your shirt, actually. <laughs> it was actually even worse than that. No, and it was shag. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, who gives their five-year-old child an opportunity to do that? But you think the number one thing is giving empowerment is, to your children by giving them some independence. Yes. So I think today, in today's world, parents don't give kids enough independence. Or if they're, they're worried if they don't control their education and control what's going on, that then the kids might not succeed. All right. So one other question I have for you is you... You have always been really tall. So when you were 13, <laughs> you were already five foot 10, and your mom is five, was five foot one. Is that correct? That's uh, correct. How did you handle it, and how do you think other people should handle whatever issue they have that they're uncomfortable with, that they can't change? To other women out there, no matter what your body type is, you're too tall, too thin, too fat, too whatever, um, you know, first thing you have to do is accept yourself, no matter what. And you have to realize that the most important thing in life is not how you look, it's like who you are. And that is and who you are and what you bring to society, which is what I guess it taught me. What, what was most important to me is that I could do things to help other people. Even though I was tall and kind of gawky looking, at that point, um, I, could, I was still a good human being and it made, and it worked for me. Well, thank you, Mom, so much for your interview. Thank, thank you, you, Susan. So thank you for inviting me and, and for listening to me. I learned so many me. new things. I learned new things from you being did? your interviewer. Yeah, oh, I enjoyed okay. it. Uh, All right. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> so exciting to be here. Okay. And good. do this with you.